Hi, welcome to this virtual event. My name is Rafael Garcia, and I am the Keysight Wireless Analyzer Solutions go-to-market lead. Today, you will have a very interesting session in which we will be presenting the great value of our WaveJudge Wireless Analyzer toolset to troubleshoot ORAN use cases. First, I will provide an overview of the key aspects required to troubleshoot ORAN. The main challenge of this troubleshooting will be described next. Then, we will provide more details about finding the root cause of anomalies with a couple of use cases. Here, we will add some demo with real tools. And finally, we will wrap up with a quick summary. I hope that you enjoy it. ORAN Alliance specifies different nodes, sections, and standardized interfaces, creating a flexible and disaggregated architecture. It is important to test the components in combination for interoperability, but now it is necessary to test each component in isolation for conformance to the standards. A key factor to isolate problems is the ability to capture and analyze the traffic in multiple interfaces simultaneously. Another great value added is the capacity to isolate the device under test by replacing some of the real nodes in the architecture by elements that have been validated and can be considered as reference solutions. This slide shows Keysight UXM 5G wireless test platform used as a network emulator in order to isolate any issues caused by real user equipment. We can add a sophisticated channel emulator to simulate the real multipath and fading conditions. The uplink and downlink traffic in this emulator can be decoded and analyzed by WaveJudge. Actually, Keysight 5G radio access and core network test portfolio is tailored to the entire supply chain workflow. Users can uniquely access a common set of reference solutions to isolate issues and simplify the sharing of results across the workflow from pre-silicon to cloud deployments. Well, these are the main principles to properly test ORAN components. Now, let's focus on the challenge in this process. Clearly, we need to find the best way to verify compliance against the 3GPP and ORAN specifications. But there are many difficulties here. Exact correlation of events happening across different layers, avoid any interference in the real communication, and obviously, minimize the time to diagnose issues. There are different vendors contributing to the overall ORAN architecture, and when something does not work, we need to stop the finger pointing. We need a solution that provides visibility into the real stack. For 3GPP specs, WebJudge provides all of this. A detailed cross-layer analysis with advanced visualizations, multi-layer decoding with drill down into different layers of data, and access to deep physical layer analysis and IQ import from different instruments. Now it is time to get a bit more technical and show an example of how we can use Keysight, WebJudge, and ORN Studio to isolate and troubleshoot an ORU. This ORU has an issue with multiple section IDs. This is the case of having more than one burst stacked on top of each other, or if in the same slot you have more than one burst. Either way increments the section IDs, and this ORU does not handle that well. We can use normal UEs or Keysight UE emulator and our S5040A will behave as an ODU emulator. WaveJudge will be used to analyze uplink and downlink RF traffic, and the front howl packets will be analyzed both in WaveJudge 
and the S5048. I would like to thank my colleague Robert Stephens for his live demonstration. Please go ahead, Bob. Looking at the wave judge decoding here, we can see that all the PDSCHs look like they're decoding just fine, except for this one. On slot 10, and each time on slot 10, it looks like we have an issue here. So let's, let's look more closely at what's happening on slot 10. Here, WaveJudge allows you to look at each of the code blocks that make up the transport burst that was being sent. So the CRC failed on the transport burst that was sent. So now let's go look to see which code blocks failed. And you can see here, most of these code blocks look like they're all okay. But this one here, now we see an error on that one. That one didn't pass CRC. And let's see what happens here if any other ones pass CRC as well. Yes, they did. So it looks like here you can see that only these select code blocks in the middle of the burst fail. So another thing WaveJudge allows you to do is you can take and go look at this burst. Since everything in WaveJudge is correlated, when you select this burst, these red and green lines here show you the PDSCH that you have selected in the time frequency grid. So here we're going to zoom in on the time frequency grid. And then here it's important to note that power is proportional to grayscale. So the lighter the 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 uh, the RB here here that's 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 lit up, the more power that's there. And the darker it is, the less power that's there. So now let's go and look at these code blocks. So we can see here that this code block that passed CRC is only using these RBs on this symbol. We step through, we can see that uh, here's another one as well. Now this one is split, you can see, across symbols for these RBs. Let's go look at one of the failures. So for this code block that failed, code block eight, we can see that some of the RBs are in symbol five, but other RBs, the other RBs are in symbol six here. And we can also see that because the grayscale is so low here, we see that there's a gap in energy. So there's, there, it appears that there's, there's missing energy in the middle here for each one of these code blocks where CRC failed. The thing here is now we have to figure out were the packets dropped in the RU or were the packets dropped at the input to the RU from the DU. We'll go to Open RAN Studio here, and we're going to go look at the, the, uh, the PCAP that was used to feed the RU in this case. Now here, Open RAN Studio is showing you a number of different things. In this top section here, this is showing you the C-plane content. So the C-plane content, and this, this rendering here is showing you exactly what the C-plane indicated should be sent in the user plane for allocations. You can kind of think of this as the equivalent to DCIs in the 5G and R protocol stack. For ORAN, the C-plane is showing you what the context contents are there for what's being transmitted. And you can see if you match these up, everything looks like it matches, except down here, it does look like there's a gap. So now if we scroll down here, we see that we've got this red line here that, that indicates we have out of sequence packets. So here in the U plane, we see there's, uh, we can go here to go look to see what the sequence ID is. The sequence ID here is 75. Now the U plane and the C plane each separately have adjacent and linearly increasing sequence numbers for each of the packets that come across that interface. So let's go back up and look if we can see the, the, the last U plane packet above this one. Here we see the sequence ID was 70. So clearly there was a, there are missing sequence IDs between these. And if you look here, based on the flattening that we did uh, for uh, having single uh, section IDs in the frame, you can see here we have a pairing of a C plane and a U plane packet, uh, and we don't have that pattern over here. And in addition to that, we're also able to dive a little bit deeper and see that the packets that are missing are U-plane packets because the C-plane is completely intact. So this gives you traceability all the way from RF down through the ORAN interface and into the level of looking at U-plane and C-plane. 
So it's it, 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 this is allowing us to effectively set breakpoints in the in the ORAN stack and in the 5 GNR stack and correlate those breakpoints to see exactly what's going on at each of these interfaces. WaveJudge is capable of capturing that RF and processing the RF that's 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 recorded there and looking at the full protocol stack from layer one all the way up to layer four. But WaveJudge and WaveJudge is also capable of getting baseband content. Uh, IQ data to do that same thing. But in this case, what we did here was we actually had WaveJudge open content directly from this eCPRI interface, which could come from the OpenRAN Studio appliance as a sniffer. Here we see that in slot 10, we have a CRCR on that transport first. And if we look more closely, we can see here the packets are dropped. And we're reading this directly into WaveJudge to reveal the issue that we, we've been discussing here with the dropped packets. The next example will be shorter, but it will illustrate ODU troubleshooting and finding a wrong tone mapping at L1 high that caused issues at RF level. WebJudge analysis at both interfaces was key to fix the issue quickly. Well, we are almost done. Let's finish with just one slight summary that illustrates how you can get full visibility from ORAN through 3GPP specifications. WaveJudge and OpenRAN Studio Analytics are great solutions for chipset makers, software stack developers, network equipment manufacturers, mobile operators, and open test and integration centers. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope that you found this information useful.